This podcast is not sponsored by Sattva. God damn it. Looks like we're rolling. Everything's good. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Face the Truth. Um, I had a, a pretty crazy big week uh, this last week. Um, it was amazing. Uh, something that you know I dream about always as an illustrator. For one thing, it's just amazing for me as an illustrator to get a cover for Time Magazine, period. Um, for, but for to get the Person of the Year cover... Uh, for the second time for me is just mind-blowing uh to be honest emotionally overwhelming um uh, just really exciting it's it's a historical moment in our in our country it's a historical cover uh and i'm just super super honored uh to have been a part of it and that my cover was chosen is just mind-blowing to me um and um i i got like a lot of amazing and uh, positive comments and um messages from people and uh my friend john casey here he actually wrote me and said hey man you should make a video um and share your process and and people would love to see that they'd love to see a little bit of the behind the scenes uh and and that sort of a thing and i thought man he's right i should do that and i started thinking about it and i started thinking how i was going to do it and then um <laughs> i decided to like write him a letter and say hey you want to interview me because <laughs> it makes it seem a little bit more uh you know genuine i'd rather have someone who's also an artist and john is, a, is a, an artist that i respect he's a professional he knows his his business and so i figured hey man you why don't you come up with some questions and and uh you you understand how it works you understand illustration and art and everything and that way we can go back and forth and it's just not me blabbing the whole time about myself this way we have a conversation and that's much better so um anyways without further ado everyone please welcome john casey i'm gonna hand it over to him and he's gonna um ask me questions and we're gonna talk about um this whole this whole person of the year thing so thank you for joining me for this man oh man jason thank you so much for inviting me to be on your podcast to talk to you about this painting um i really appreciate the invitation and the opportunity to ask you some questions that I think a lot of people have interested in and just that how this happens, the process of getting it done and what's happened since the image was released. Um, first of all, congratulations. Like this is a, a huge thing to have happened at this time. Thanks man. Um, you're, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, so this is your 10th time painting. The second time you've done the person of the year, Yeah. but this might be one of the most shared digitally painted images in the history of the internet. I don't know, but it's been out for, <laughs> it's been out know. for three days now. It came out the 10th um, yeah. and it has just exploded. Like it's Time Magazine's pinned top tweet. It's gotten tens of thousands of retweets, um, 170,000 likes on uh, Biden's retweet of yeah, the, the cover. It's yeah. huge. Like how does it feel to have created such a viral image? Well, to be honest, um, I, it's, it's really funny because the, the truth is, is what I really, really care about as an artist is, you know, when you get this kind of exposure and, and, and you get, you know, people that are, um, you know, ex, you know, basically just the, the fact that the painting is being seen by so many people, it, it's, it's kind of hard for me to grasp and understand that my honest feeling about it is i just hope it opens up doors so i can get more work <laughs> that's really <laughs> kind of like like i'm like great now can i get to work you know that that's you know but it, it is beyond that it's you know like i said before like i actually got really emotional um when the art director told me a few hours before they were going to um to announce it and uh I, 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 he sent me an email said, Hey, congratulations on your getting your second, um, uh, person of the year cover. And I just, it just hit me when he said that. And I just started crying and 
I just, it just was, you know, because it, it means so much to me, first of all, to be asked by Time Magazine, it's a huge honor, but this, the person of the year cover is sort of in a weird way. It feels like winning an Oscar or, or something in the illustration world. It just feels like, um, you know, you work so hard to kind of get recognition and when it finally happens in that way, it's very surreal. Um, and then all of a sudden it's, it's almost like it's no longer my baby anymore. I mean, it's like, I drew that, I painted that. It's very much a part of me. Um, and I, I had a lot of people that wrote me and said, Hey man, I saw it right away. And right away I thought that looks like something that looks like a Jason Seiler. And then they went over to my page and saw it and they're like, Oh my gosh, it is a Jason Seiler. So it is a part of me. But the weird thing is that it's, like you said, it's just being seen by so many people. It's out there now. It's like no longer, it doesn't belong to me. Um, it belongs to everybody basically. And I've seen all these memes and I, it was on Jimmy Fallon. And, um, you know, the craziest thing to me that was that Biden and Harris shared it and Luke Skywalker, Mark Hamill shared it. Wow. <laughs> like, so, I mean, stuff like that. I'm just like, this is mind blowing. And, uh, but ultimately I'm just honored. I really just feel like all politics aside, just, I just feel very honored. Uh, and it, it, it doesn't feel real, you know, it's, it's very strange. Um, but, um, yeah, mostly I just feel honored and, uh, it was just a great opportunity. Um, and it feel it feels strange. I, I don't know what else to say. It, it is <laughs> a strange feeling, you know? Um, yeah. Let's talk about how it happens. Um, did your agent contact you? Did someone from Time Magazine reach out to you? Was it a, you know, a phone call or they sent you an email? Like, how do you even begin the process of doing something like this? Well, so in 2013, I did my, I, um, well, let's see, before 2013, I only had done one job for Time Magazine and it was for the Time 100. And I did like, it was like a, seven caricatures I did. Um, and that was a huge moment for me personally, because, up, you know, I, I for years, CF Payne was doing those. And and I always dreamed of of that sort of a thing, because CF Payne was, is an artist that I really looked up to. And I was like, I want to do what he's doing. And so when I got that, I was like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I painted the Time 100 thing. This is so cool. Um, and then it wasn't until like, gosh, at least maybe 10 years later. <laughs> it were maybe wow. maybe not 10 years maybe gosh i don't know it could be close to 10 years later i got i got um asked to paint snowden um for a time magazine cover and it i didn't know at the time that it was for the person of the year cover i didn't i had no idea they didn't explain that to me all i was doing from my perspective was i was doing a cover for time magazine of snowden and i i was so excited i, I couldn't believe, I finally got my first time cover um, I did it. They were extremely happy with it. And they said, do you want to do another cover? And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, yes. And so they, they, they really liked a, a drawing that I did of the Pope uh, for Der Spiegel. And they said, we really like this drawing that you did. Would you, would you like to do a painting kind of very similar? We, we really like the way that this looked, but we want full color. And, um, you know, from different references and stuff. And I was like, for sure. So I thought that I was doing two covers for Time Magazine. I didn't know that they, they hire several different artists to paint several different people and sometimes several artists to paint the same person. I had no idea that, that any of that was going on. And so when, I, when my cover was chosen for, for 2013's Person of the Year with the Pope, I was in shock. I, cu I couldn't believe I painted the Person of the Year. It, it just blew me away. And again, very similar feeling where I'm just, I'm so grateful. Uh, it's such an honor, but I, it's hard for me to wrap my mind around the fact that billions of people are looking at this thing. It's just weird. So from that, from that first Pope cover and, and then the Snowden I did, I found out, oh, that was for the same issue. And they ended up using that Snowden as a full page inside. So that was pretty, that was pretty cool. But then basically every year since 2013, around this time of year, the art director will uh, email me or call me and just say, um, Hey, I got a, I got a, a possible cover for you. What do you think? And I, and so 
then from that point, I was like, is, is it for person of the year? Like I'll ask because like before I had no idea. And he's like, yeah, we got to keep it under wraps. I'm like, okay, uh, don't worry. And so, um, so basically since 2013, I've been asked, um, uh, pretty, I think every year, like last year I painted the guardians of the year, um, uh, with uh, all the people in court that were, uh, you know, on the impeachment trials. Um, I have painted Angela Merkel for person of the year. Um, and a few other people. So it's, it, this, this, this time of year again, he contacted me and, um, he said the same thing. Like we got, I got a cover for you. What do you think? And he's like, we'd, we'd like to do Biden and Harris. And I, I know this is for person of the year. I'm like, I'm like, okay, this is great. And, um, that's basically how it got started. And, um, in, in, in now that I know that there's other artists that have been hired, um, and there could be possibly someone else painting Biden and Harris. It is a nerve wracking feeling because just because I'm painting them doesn't mean that it's going to be used or seen. And I also have to have a, a sort of a mental and emotional preparation to not take it so personal. If my painting isn't chosen over someone else's, um, and that's hard as an artist, you know, you, it's a hard thing, but I've, I've gotten used to it. Cause like I, I painted Angela Merkel and, um, for person of the year and they chose her as person of the year, but they used a different artist's painting. And, uh, I, and I was just like, Oh, <laughs> but you know what? That's just the way it was. And I don't, it's not, it's out of my control. It doesn't mean my painting wasn't good. And so I have to, it's a, it's, it's a, 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 a test of one's uh i guess maturity or you know not to not not even maturity but just a way you know I, I think it's it's something i've had to like try to get over just you know put your pride aside and and just realize that hey it's an honor to be hired by them and once you do the painting just do the best painting you can and then once you give it to them it's, it's out of your hands. hands yeah and so is it, is it kind of like being nominated for an Oscar just to let people, because people are more familiar with that. I mean, as an artist, this it is might be. some yeah. huge opportunity, but you don't really know what the outcome is going to be when you begin it. Yeah. And it, to be honest, it kind of feels like that sometimes every time I've worked for time, because like I did a, a Pelosi and Trump cover uh, like two years ago now, which I can't believe it's been two years, but it's a caricature cover. And I couldn't believe they asked me to do a caricature cover for the cover of time. It was so exciting because I haven't seen them do a caricature cover in years. And I was just, I was almost more excited about that than when I did the Pope cover, just because I, I don't think caricature gets enough um, respect out there. And the fact that Time Magazine had me do a caricature cover was just so cool. Um, but the entire time I was working on it, I, in my mind, I'm like, there's a very good chance it's not going to run because the news changes quickly. Um, there's all kinds of different things. And, it, and it's happened to me multiple times in my career where I do the painting. They go, we're actually going a different direction now. <laughs> it's like, oh, uh, so I, I, I have to kind of, heart. yeah. So you have to kind of, you know, now I'm kind of prepared for that. But it, for me, it's like, okay. Um, I'm honored to work for them. So I'm going to just give it my all. And, and, and that's what I did with this Kamala and, um, Biden piece is that I wanted just to do the best painting I could possibly do. And then just, you know, hope for the best, you know? And, um, yeah, you know, the art director basically told me he had, a, he had a, he had an idea in his mind about how he would like to see their heads together and he sent me some old Time Magazine covers that were not necessarily how I ended up doing it, but it's kind of similar where they have a few people to kind of clump together. And he was mm -hmm. like, I really like that kind of a feel. And I was like, okay. And I think I, I thought I got it right away. And then, and then he sent me a bunch of photographs of Biden and Harris. And I picked out a couple that I thought would work best. I love the lighting on them. And I, and I wrote him, I said, hey, I think these two – were with these two main references there was actually about f a few of them that were very similar so there's kind of like a combination of all of them to create you know but it was mostly based on two references and i said i think these work best and he was like i agree that that's exactly the, the references that we like as well so he said and he was like the only thing is is 
in all the references, Biden has his mouth open. Can you, can you paint him with his mouth closed? And so I was like, yeah. <laughs> so I basically got started on this with a sketch phase, um, got the sketch approved. And then I had, I think four or five days to finish it, but I finished it in four days. Wow. Um, and I, I read on Time Magazine's website that you said that you put about 40 or 40, more than 40 hours into it total. So yeah. Is that like four, 10 hour days in a row? Basically. Yeah. You wow. know, and, um, most, the sketch phase was pretty quick. Um, once it was approved, um, then it was just, I knew right away how I wanted to paint it. Um, and it's, it's interesting because a lot of people have said that it looks like a, a photo, like, Oh, I didn't even know it was a painting. Yeah. This, that's something well, I wanted to, to talk to yeah. you about for sure. But I find it interesting because I purposely did a technique that I kind of came up with for this cover that I'm going to continue to use. Um, and I did it the way I did it because I wanted it to be clear that it was a painting. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about it later, but you know, I, I you can perp, I purposely leave sketch lines and layers of the canvas popping through and paint, you know, a lot of brushy stuff. So, um, it just, I wanted it to feel organic, you know. I think it'll be really cool when we get an opportunity in a, in a few minutes to, to share the artwork and let people see what it really looks like up close. So far, people have just seen the digital image and mainly on social media. Yeah. So they're not getting that, you know, the brushwork isn't super clear. I think in print, you'll probably see a lot more of it. It'll be really exciting to see this in print. Yeah, um, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> I think yeah. one thing that you kind of mentioned, hit on a, a few minutes ago was that you were so surprised Time Magazine asked you to do a caricature that ended up for a Time Magazine cover. And even now this digital painting, like as someone who follows your career, but also is interested in digital art, works in digital art, having that put in front of everyone's eyes is kind of just huge for, for what it is. It gives it a lot of credibility, I think, kind of creates some history with the, the medium. And uh, that's, I think, just think that's really cool too, that it's not a photograph. They could have gone with the photograph. I'm yeah. sure they could have gotten a shoot with them, you know, for, for something of the stature, but that they went with a, a painting, I think is really cool. I do too. I mean, I think that it, I think that a painting, no offense against photographers. I mean, there's amazing photographers out there in for Time Magazine and everything. But for me personally, and maybe it's just because I love illustration, when I see a painting, it just, there's something kind of classic about it that just feels a little, I don't know. It, it's, it's, it just feels like a look again, this is, I, this is maybe just my perspective. It just feels more, um, I don't know. I, I think, I think about the classic paintings. Like I think about like when you look at the older, like from even the 60s, 70s and even 80s, like I remember covers that I would see as a kid. And there's just mm -hmm. something about even like movie posters, like Drew Struzan's posters that are painted. There's something about that. That's just more, um, it draws me in more, you know, it makes me more excited and just, I want to look at it more. And it's just, that's, I, I actually thought about this a lot. The, the difference between seeing a photograph, like a movie poster is a good example because they're mainly photographs now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the Drew Struzan ones are a good example of, I think a photograph happens really fast. Like you could edit it. You can change it, you know, you can put things together, you can do a lot in Photoshop. Yeah. But a painting is made like mark by mark by yeah. your hands. And I think that that conveys like it's you can spend much more time viewing a painting than you your eyes need in order to take in a photograph. And I, I think that kind of adds to the reasons why a painting is a good choice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm always for it because of course that's my my way I make a living. But um I mean it's you know, I, I, again, like, I don't need, mean to keep saying the same thing again, but like as a kid who was always obsessed about being an artist and I collected Time Magazine and Rolling Stone and, and anything that had illustration in it to finally, to, 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 to do that myself. Um, I mean, I've been a professional illustrator now for like almost 20 years. And um, I've been lucky to paint for almost every single publication out there and do 
all kinds of different work. And I still, I'm, I'm still, I still pinch myself basically. And I still go to the, to a, whatever magazine stores or shops are still around. And I still have to go there and see it. And it, and it never gets old. Like, like when, when this comes, I know they're going to send me copies of this, but I still want to go to a, a bookstore and find it and see it in a shelf. Cause it's just, in the it, wild. It, it's, it's like my childhood dreams. You know, like when I, when I got to do a mad cover, like I, it, it was like my 12 year old self was just like, Oh my gosh. You know, like, <laughs> totally. and so I just think it's, you know, you know, in the, I'm just always floored when I get asked to do something. Um, and I do illustrations for a lot of publications or different things that I've never heard of before. And I'm just as excited to do it. But when it's something like time, it's, it, it's, it's definitely a, a lot more pressure because, you know, you know that a lot more people are going to see it and um, the, the press is going to be like the media is going to share it and that sort of a thing. So there is that feeling of, Ooh, you know, I better, I got to really bring it. But beyond that, there's just an excitement and an honor, you know, I just feel super honored to, to have been a part of it, you know? Totally. Um, well, I think a lot of people take for granted or we might take for granted what the process is to do this. We're familiar with photoshops and Cintiqs and stuff, but maybe a lot of people listening to this have no idea how a digital painting starts or what it's done. What are just like the basic tools that you use to start a painting? Um, well, for this particular one, I, I pretty much start everything the same way. Um, sometimes I start my sketches on my iPad Pro um, just because I, I really enjoy, I love drawing on Procreate and um, it's, it feels very natural to me sketching on that. It's just, I feel like, like, um, I don't know. I just enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. I really, I think it's an, it's an amazing tool. Um, and then for this one, I sketched it on my Cintiq. I use a 27 inch Cintiq and, um, I basically start off, um, just with, well, hmm. well, with this one, I start off with a white background. A lot of times I'll start off with a gray background and while I'm sketching, I'll kind of block in um, some highlights and some shadow while I'm sketching. Just even though it's loose, you can see, you can see the form. This one, I just wanted to get the drawing accurate because um, the proportions had to be like perfect. Um, and once I had that, I, I drew her, I drew, I drew Biden and then I drew Harris. And then, and then I put my sketches together. I didn't draw them together at first. I, I sketched them. I wanted to get their likenesses right. And then I was able to put them together. So that's one thing that's nice about digital is I can kind of move my sketches around to get it, you know, to play with that, the composition, you know. Um, and that was pretty much how I started, just real. And, and as far as like brushes and so on goes, um, um, there's a brush. I use a lot of Kyle Webster's brushes in Photoshop. Oh, those are great. Yeah, he's got this one that I really like. It's called Non Photo Blue, um, and that it's it's I never use the Non Photo Blue thing. Like it, it automatically is selected to blue. Um, I just turn it to like a black or a dark gray. It's got like a real natural pencil feel to it. It it, it has like a tooth and a and a pencil like um, feeling. So when I'm sketching with it, um, it really it really has. Like, I, I really like the way the, the sketch actually looks. It, it feels like I was drawing it with a pencil. Um, and the reason I like that is because the more and more I've been painting lately, I like when my sketch kind of shows through a little bit. Mm -hmm. And if the sketch lines kind of have uh, a more color pencil-like texture, there's just something more organic about it that that adds to the layering when, you, when you're painting on top of it. And it just it feels more alive and um i don't know it's just a part of the, the process because some people have a different style they, they want their painting to be super super clean and and slick and i i want there to be like a thumbprint a, a little bit mm -hmm. i want there to be like the artist's hands and like the yeah. organic structure of it yeah that was I a think. lot harder to do i think in photoshop before kyle webster's brushes became offered um, I remember <laughs> photoshop did have kind of a slick like technical feel to the mark making process 
But yeah. so just to, to be clear, you, you draw on a Cintiq, which is kind of like a giant iPad. It's a screen mm -hmm. yeah. um, where you use a pressure sensitive pen and you yeah. do the drawing just like you would do a drawing on paper. There's no, mm -hmm. the, the Photoshop isn't giving you anything beyond a surface with which to work on, right? Yeah, nope, it's just, once you get going, it's just straight up drawing. Yeah, there's no yeah. edited photo element to this painting at all. No, no, yeah. no, I don't, I don't work that way. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's, it's all straight up drawing and painting. And, um, and then even when it comes to painting, um, I, um, I pretty much, I've, I kind of, I'm known, I think for this now, cause I've talked about so much. I'm, I, st I stick to, of something very similar to a Zorn palette, which Zorn is a, it was a famous artist, um, Zorn Anders, and his palette was, uh, in, in oil was black and um, um, vermilion or like a cad red, one or the other, and then yellow ochre and a white. And that was it. And from those colors, he, he would get like his, enough of a range and there was a unity between his palette and the harmony so I kind of work the same way. I try to only, um, I try to keep my palette very limited. But like with this one, a, a lot of how I paint now digitally is, is I kind of mix uh, like a tone that feels very close to um, what I want to go with. And then, you know, on the, on the left side or, or wherever your toolbar is in Photoshop, there's a little, like a little, palette box it shows you what color you have if you mm -hmm. if you push if you click on it a palette opens up and you can see your color you can either saturate or desaturate and i i mostly work that way where i'm looking at my i open that window up and i look at my the, my subject or whatever and i, I kind of gauge the value and color and i kind of just move it around and by feeling and just put it in and it's it's more similar to mixing traditionally, if that makes sense. It's kind of, it's kind of um, intuition at this point, you know. Uh, but I, I try to keep it very simple. I don't, I don't like to, like I, I'm mostly thinking about temperature and values the whole time I'm painting. Like I'm not necessarily trying to copy the f the colors I'm seeing in a photo reference. I'm trying to, uh, like for example, the the reference of Biden was really like in the shadows, it was just black. Mm -hmm. So I had to, I didn't want it to be just black. You know, I want there to be like a warmth and, and everything so that the face there's like a, there's like a softness there. So and that's the thing is a lot of times uh, photographs, they will just blacken like mm -hmm. certain areas. But I know in reality, that's not really what it looks like. That's what, how a photo captures it. But in reality, there's depth in the shadows, you know? So that's yeah, what I try details, to do. Uh, those details are absolutely beautiful to look at. Um, and I think it'd be really cool if, if we could show people. Yeah. Maybe, maybe start with showing the, that, the pencil sketch. Because okay. I, I noticed that the, you got that sketch down. It looks, now I don't know how much work you worked on it or edited it, but once you had the sketch, there wasn't a lot of changes to get to the finished painting. No, there wasn't. Um, not from when the sketch was approved. Now, do you see this sketch right now? Yes. Yeah. Looks okay. good. So yeah, so this is the the Biden sketch. So this is what I started with, and um, so it's just basic, you know, trying to get the proportions to be as close as possible. Um, so it's mostly just a lot of measuring. Um, and then I didn't spend too much time like rendering. I didn't, it just wanted to make sure that the anatomy looked right. Um, but when you get up close, you can really see that it's pretty, um, wow. yeah, this, this doesn't look like a rendered drawing yeah. at all. You know, it doesn't look like a finished pencil sketch, which I know you're very capable of doing, but this is extremely loose and also stays very true to the finished product. So I think it's interesting to see that process. And what's really interesting is to, to is that when you look at the final, a lot of these lines in this sketch are still seen in the painting. Like you can still see a lot of them uh, when you zoom in. But when you see it from a distance, you don't even notice it. 
Um, but I, I, I leave that there, there's, there's certain ways you can work. You can, you can paint, um, on top of your pencil lines. Um, and then you can go to the layer underneath and you can kind of erase your pencil lines away if you don't want them anymore. I do that sometimes, but when I'm doing a painting where I want it to feel is organic and more like a piece of art, if that makes sense, mm-hmm. I, I just paint directly on top of my, my lines and I make it one right away. So I can't necessarily go underneath my brushwork and get away, get rid of the pencil lines because it's all one. Oh, you're painting right on the same layer as the pencil sketch. So translating that to a traditional medium would be just you get a canvas, you do a sketch on it, and you just start applying yeah. your, ink, your paints right to that. Yep. Yeah. How much, um, like, revision or changes do you need to make to the structure as you're, you know, I know you're, you're a very proficient caricaturist, which is all about just – exaggerating and minimizing and maximalizing shapes and uh, relationships between those things. But these portraits are obviously very, very true to the likeness of the person. Mm -hmm. Is that hard for you to find those small shapes or does that come together pretty quickly for you? Um, It is, it's for me, it's uh, in a way caricature is a little bit more challenging because a caricature, you're understanding what you're looking at, but you're, doing something different with it and you're, you're pushing some, you're, you're, you're taking what you know to be true and pushing it and taking it to another level. Whereas with the portrait, I need to accurately capture the proportions. So that's what I focus on first is getting the features in the, you know, exactly where they need to be. Um, and that part's boring. That's like doing math, just basically mm-hmm. getting, getting it right. And once I have that though, the next step is to zoom in um, and just slow down and get these little curves and these little things just exactly right. Even though I didn't spend a lot of time rendering it, there was no reason for me to render this. I just needed accuracy. And once I had enough information down correctly, then it was, it was uh, time to, uh, to just move to the next step. It's interesting to me that you didn't even need to draw the whole structure of the head, the back of the head, yeah. everything to know that you had the part that you're everyone's going to see um the correct proportions yeah i didn't i mean that was actually i didn't need to waste my time with that because i knew she was her that part was going to be covered you know <laughs> and that, so the wasting your time element is interesting to talk about too because having known your work and sometimes you're under extremely tight deadlines like you said you had four days to do this finished rendered painting which would take some very proficient artist weeks to complete, but you've turned in projects for magazines under extremely tight deadlines, right? Like a yeah. day or less than a day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, w- with, I'm, I'm really used to that now where it's like, Hey, just get the sketch done, get it approved so I can just start painting. Um, and then once that sketch all... is approved, do they, do they come back to you about through any of the painting process? to make any suggestions or edits typically? Um, sometimes they do. With this one, um, you want me to go over to the actual the process right now? Yeah, that would be great. So we can I don't know maybe if you just can give see. an idea. I don't um, know. Yeah, show that and then maybe just give an idea of what, can we, what Elements Time magazine brought in. Okay, so it, I'm, I'm not sure what you can see right now. It's on the, the Harris sketch still. You see this now? Yep. Team right up. It looks very clear and crisp on my end too. Okay, so you see this. So basically, once they approve the sketch, um, the only thing he really told me was he wants like a dark background. Um, he was like thinking black, and I. But again, like I was thinking black might be too harsh. Like I, and so I thought I'm gonna make it dark, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna build it up. So. You know, there's there's a, a way of painting in oils uh, that you might be familiar with. It's called Dutch Dutch Flemish um, painting techniques where, you know, like Rembrandt, uh, Tom Fluherty does this a lot and talks about it a lot. But it, it's basically like doing a raw umber um, underpainting 
very, very thin layers of raw umber building up the shadows. And then wherever the light hits the face, that's where you would lay in thick o white oil paint. Um, and you basically do a full rendered painting that looks super realistic, but all just with raw umber and white. And then when that's done, then you there's a, a layering technique where you put your color in and all that kind of stuff. So I was kind of thinking that way when I did this because I wanted, I want, you know, for example, if, if, well, let me just ex explain this, I guess, um, this piece here this, or this phase or step is that I, the first thing I did with this is I just painted in like a sort of like a brownish type color over my sketch. Um, and this way, you know, it kind of just pushes it back. So there's no white. I didn't want any white or anything. I'm going to, you know, I like to start on with a, you know, a non-white canvas basically where I can mm -hmm. start to kind of pull the light out of it. But this is the first basic step that I did was just laying in this kind of a brownish thing. And I'll send steps to him, to the art director, just to show him what I'm thinking. But this is the second phase of it. And this is actually a really important step because this is where the kind of the, the aesthetic of the painting really was created. Um, I could easily go in at this phase and just kind of fill in, you know, with the fill tools or whatever, but I feel that it's really important to actually paint it all in um, because it just has, it has a more organic painterly feel to it. And you can't get that unless you do it this way. And the interesting thing about this is this act, this painting is actually, um, I think 30, 35 or 36 inches in height. So it's a pretty large file. And when I actually started working on my brushwork, my brush would, <laughs> the, the file is so big that when I would do a stroke, it would take a while for it to, <laughs> to fill in a section. So it almost felt traditional in a way. It was kind of weird. It allowed me to like build up these layers in a way. And when you look at this, I'm, I'm using like a, um, again, it's one of Kyle's brushes that's an oil brush, I think, that just has like a sort of a canvasy type texture to it. It's kind of rough. And I'm just laying this in and you can see how I'm painting on top of my, my pencil lines and kind of, you know, scruffing them up and, and it almost, I'm, I'm very much painting this in a way that I would if I was doing an oil painting. I mean, it's pretty much exactly the same kind of technique it's just done digitally. So I'm just building up the, this, this layers. Um, and I don't want to get too dark because I wasn't sure. I knew I didn't want the background to be black, black. I wanted it to have some kind of warmth and depth to it. Um, I think that translates really well to the, the, the finished version, not to jump to that one too quickly, but you can see as you progress how each step remains a part of the finished product, which is really an yeah. interesting way to, to look at it step by step. And then you can kind of recall pieces of it. Yeah. And this, this one, this is the, the step, the next step after it where I, I, I do get darker and I believe it doesn't get any darker and I don't even touch the background anymore after this. This is like step th three. So I just, you can just see when I come in close how textured and this is, and you can see all the brushwork, but I like that you can see the color coming through the background. Um, it, it really has that feeling of a stained canvas. Yeah, it really does. It, it has so much life and depth to it for what it's portraying as shadow. Right. But yeah, um, it's it's a very uh, detailed and information rich shadow. Yeah, for sure. And then basically the next the next phase, um, you can see I'm I'm starting to introduce color, and so I just kind of I've, I've kind of just done a wash, and again I'm 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 keeping that that underpainting sort of aesthetic or theme in mind because I I realize that as I continue I want some of these. I guess characteristics of 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 the sketch and you know the sketch and the underpainting. I want those bits to show through. And this um, is still on the same layer, right? <clears throat> yeah, this is all one layer still. So as you're moving forward, progressing in the painting, you're kind of getting rid of 
elements of the previous step. Like as you make a brush stroke, yeah. that pencil line directly under it is going to be altered for, from then on. Yep. And again, some people might think that's crazy uh, because, you know, but it, I could do it where I have everything on separate layers, but I find that for me, it's more of a organic process and it feels more honest and true to my hand. Um, but it, there is easier ways to do it and, and there's, but I, I'm not thinking about it that way. I'm trying to, my, my main goal is I'm just trying to do a painting. Um, yeah, I know from your previous work and having taken your schoolism class that working digitally <clears throat> does allow you to, like, for example, you could do a grayscale painting above your pencil sketch on another layer and then add in a wash of color on a layer above that, um, that kind of, you know, you would set it to multiply and then it would show the layer beneath it. Um, one thing is, that I think is interesting is as you've progressed in your career and your work continues to get better, you're going more and more towards the most direct translation of working traditionally in a digital format. Yeah. Well, I think I feel a little bit more confident in my, my painting ability too, where I can just kind of jump into it. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm more and more attracted to brushwork. Like I'm, I, you know, I'm, I, I really want sexy brushwork. <laughs> um, like, so this next phase here, I, I did create a new layer um, just to be, I wanted to be careful. So I painted, so when I started painting the color, introdu introducing the color to Kamala, that's on a layer above my underpainting. And you can see how it starts off. It's very much just like blocking in, I'm, bl I'm blocking in, um, like I'm looking at shapes. When I, when I paint, I'm looking for shapes um, of color and value. And, I'm, and I literally just compare those shapes to one another. Like this shape here on the bridge of nose, I, that's a shape, I block that shape in. This is a shape and a value and a color and I block that in. And it's, it's almost like putting together a puzzle. Um, and I'm not really focused on details at, at this stage of the painting. It's just trying to get these. And, I, and also here's the thing I think it's important. I don't zoom in, like I never really zoom in like this, this close. I'm painting from a distance like this. So I'm trying to see the whole face while I paint. <clears throat> Which is another connection to working traditionally. If you're on a canvas and you're standing your arms length away from the canvas, um, you know, that's how far you're going to be. That's how much, how close your eyes are going to be to the surface. So yeah. working on it like this is very similar. Yeah, for sure. That's exactly. Um, so let's go here. Just a couple more phases here. So this is the next step where you can see that most of her face is blocked in. And uh, like, even if you look down here in her neck, there's just, you can, I, I almost really just like the way that looks. It's kind of beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> just like you can see those strokes. Um, but the whole face is just made up of just, just brush strokes. And I haven't, I didn't start, you know, I basically did this first. Um, and then once I felt comfortable, like, like, okay, this is looking good. Then the next phase is, is starting to block in Biden. And so this is the first step was I just really, I wanted to get his eyes right. But I think it's kind of cool to see that this, at this stage, because you can still see very much the underpainting and the sketch. And then, you know, just the introduce, you know, just basically introducing um, the color in a more opaque way on top, but you, you can see that, you know, there's bits here of the underpainting and sketch that are still are starting to still kind of sneak through. Um, <clears throat> but this stage I did paint the color on a different layer above just because, so the, the whole underpainting is all one flat layer. When I started introducing the color, I did that on a different layer. Um, and that was, uh, just in case I need to change something else. Um, so there is that aspect to it. <clears throat> I think it's so cool to see it at this stage. Um, it almost looks like a oil pastel painting. Like these are thick, chunky marks. It, it, looking at this, you wouldn't guess that that was the route that you would take to get to a, uh, a finished painting that 
is tricking a lot of people into thinking that it's a photograph. Um, you know, when, when viewed uh, smaller, especially like social media, like we were saying, um, it's interesting that you, you use such a like chunky mark making to yeah. get there. I mean, I when it's funny, like when I was working on this, I would, uh, after like a painting session, I would go upstairs and I'd tell my wife, it's looking good. <laughs> like, I'm really happy. It was because it was happening exactly how I wanted it. That This is exactly the look and feel I was, I was wanting to. And the brush work was coming together just how I wanted it. I, this, I wanted it to be thick and chunky and more Im impressionistic um, and have the illusion of looking real, you know? Like, if you look really close on the nose, I mean, it's just a lot of just, just chunky... Um, you know, marks, and this doesn't really change that much when you see it in the final. It's pretty much stays that way. Um, I think it's cool you mentioned that you were feeling good as you're working on it, because as you're painting, you're getting like instant feedback. Like, does it look good? Does it not look good? It tells you right away, right? Yeah. So it was being on that path of this is going well, this is successful with the stage that it's at. Does that kind of motivate you and make you excited to put in that next 10 hour day right after the third one? Oh yeah. No, I know. I knew while I was working on it that it was looking good. And I was like, this is, this is feeling epic and, and it's, and the brushwork is sexy. It's like, like I was, I'm very much, I'm, I'm all about the brushwork. I love brushwork. Um, and like when you look at this phase at this stage, um, like I mentioned before about the Dutch, the Dutch Flemish technique where the, the, where the light hits, that's where you put the, the thicker paint. And if you look um, in the shadows here, the shadows are all still very much thin. And my underpainting, the ear is like almost a suggestion. And while I was at this stage, I was like, ooh, this is looking exactly what I want. And I made the decision... When I was about at this stage, I made the decision that I'm going to keep this underpainting in the shadows here almost exactly like how it is. I don't want to touch any of it um, because I just thought it looked so cool that way. Um, and then I basically, that's basically what ended up happening. Um, this is the final, this is the final um, step that I saved. There's more to the painting than this, and I'll show you the final next. But you can see from that last step that I just shared compared to this, how I started to go in and just start softening some of this, but purposely, <laughs> but purposely leaving. Um, it's, it's hard to explain. I guess the only thing I can say is if I only know how to do what I'm doing here because I paint traditionally, like, I'm like, okay, this is, this feels, and, and it's important. Some people are like, well, why, if it's so important why, to make your digital pain, painting look traditional, why don't you just paint, paint it traditionally? Well, there's a lot of reasons why. Um, time for one thing and also money for another thing. <laughs> and um, also, you know, digitally I can, I can work faster and if there is things I need to work on. But also the reason I care so much is I want my painting to feel, um, tr have a traditional feel to it because I, I want it to feel as close to what, what my work would look like if I was working traditionally. Like I don't want, I don't really want someone to look at it and go, Oh, that's a digital painting or that I want them to just go, Oh, that's a Siler painting. Period. Yeah, speaking of the Dutch Flemish technique, like portrait, uh, portrait painting was like pretty much mastered by Van Eyck, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, like human beings learn, they somehow figured out how to make, a representational image of someone using pigments, uh, mediums, paint, canvas, um, and you know, hundreds of years ago, we as a species, we kind of figured that out. So having the digital tools doesn't really mean that you're going to reinvent the whole process for how it comes about. Yeah, no, no that makes sense. So this is the final painting, um, and like I said, in the final painting, like all these shadows are still, you can, they're still pretty much from that underpainting all popping through. And what I was really pleased with was the backside of his head here. All of this part of the neck and the shirt and the hair is all the soft, just underpainting I did. And 
and then the ear like when you look at a distance it looks very real but when you look up close it, it really this is this is why i love painting i love that when you look at this up close it's almost like a bonus painting like these sections are just brush strokes and marks that were just laid down by feeling and you can almost kind of cut like um count these brush strokes and the reason this excites me is because when early in my career i spent so much time and i worked so hard to paint so photorealistic and get as tight as possible and i would spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours like rendering something so photorealistic putting the pores in the skin and all this kind of stuff and but to me it's way more exciting to look at this ear and just see the brushwork and then zoom out and be like, Oh, that looks really real. <laughs> and the reason it's funny because people have been confused and thought this was a photo the whole time. But when you see it from a distance, it does have that illusion. But when you zoom in, um, this is why I'm very proud of this painting is because of this. Like it just feels like, I love that. I can still see my sketch marks. Yeah. Look at that on the cheek there. I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful to see that up close. And that, that canvas texture underneath it. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, and again, like this was a, a, a technique that I've never really done before. Um, and I'm going to keep continue to develop it. Um, but I, I love like even in the mouth here, you get parts of the canvas that are coming through that I didn't fill in. The mouth is pretty simple looking. But again, when you zoom out, it pulls all to, it all comes together. And, and to me, wow. that's, that's, that's what's exciting about painting. That's what I love about painting. I love that painting is literally just, you know, it's an illusion. It's brush strokes laid down next to each other with the correct value and the correct, you know, temperature. And when you, when you get it right, it just, there's like an, uh, there's something just al that's alive about it. That's really, um, I don't know. It, that's what excites me. I love awesome brushwork. Like even the, the suggestion of his coat on the other side here was just, a couple just marks oh and you got a signature up there too just yeah and even the tie very simple just marks but again it doesn't need to be more than that when you zoom out and like we talked about before like even the flag on her on her yeah, this part's coat. incredible to me i think you could really spend a minute looking at that because i have seen your work <laughs> where you would have painted every star in that flag with crisp edges and highlights and, um, you yeah. know, it's, which is amazing to look at, but there's something about this. It's almost like looking at one of those magic eye posters that just fascinates your mind that you are com completely, your mind and your eye completely fool you into thinking that this is uh, a very close representational copy when it is an illusion. It's a whole different yeah. um, way of conveying the idea. Like look at the stars. It's amazing to me that that reads so perfectly well as a flag when um, up, up close, it, you know, it looks like you could count the number of marks that you made on this. Yeah, and you know what's really interesting? A lot of the, the marks in this look as rough as they do because at this, at this um, resolution, the brush I was working with doesn't, can't really work this small. So it, it makes it even more choppy looking. And so, but, but it didn't matter because when I looked at it from a distance, it worked and that's all I needed was that, like, it looks like the stars, but it's just a suggestion. Um, even the, yeah. even the necklace, if you look at it from a distance, it looks very real, but when you zoom in on it, it's very, very loose. Um, I, I did this the, that very quickly. Um, and it, it helps to have the, you know, experience of doing this work for a while and realizing, you know, it took me a while to figure this out, but like, I realized, hey, people are only going to see the magazine at whatever, I don't know, eight and a half by 11 or 10 by 11, whatever size the magazine is. They're not going to be able to zoom way, way in on things. Um, how does it look at print size? That's what matters. And then of course, a lot of people that are seeing it on Instagram or whatever, they see it, you know, I haven't, I haven't really shared any um, of my close-ups or anything. I'm going to eventually do that, but I wanted to share a video first because I think this is a way cooler way for people to learn about the, the process of it and everything. Um, 
But, um, but yeah, overall, I'm very happy and pleased with how it turned out. And I love the chaoticness of this brushwork um, and the, the sketches and the canvas. And again, this was sort of an experimental, you know, thing I wanted to do. Like I, I kind of had the idea in my mind, like of before I started and I'm really happy that it turned out the way it did. And I'm going to, I'm going to continue to explore this technique, I think a lot more. It really makes me wonder how much of what we see is what's really there. I feel like our minds do some, you know, the visual information that we take in is translated in our heads. And when you zoom on this, you see that what you think you're seeing is not really there. It's like really fascinating to see it up close. Thank you for uh, sharing these details. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting to me as well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I think that it's, um, but that's, again, that's what I love about painting. And I'm just trying to emulate my heroes, you know, like, like Sargent is like one of, I think he's like the godfather of amazing brushwork. And um, yeah, I, this piece and especially like makes me think of seeing his in person. Oh man, that's a huge compliment. <laughs> There's an artist that people should look up. I really love um, Nicholas Uribe. Um, I, I've had him on my podcast before, but he, I just love his brushwork. So awesome. There's so many painters out there that just, um, like even Mitch Griffiths that I had on, on a week ago, um, his paintings are so photorealistic, but when you, when he'll share like the close-ups and it's like, whoa, just like that abstract kind of shapes and color and, and you realize that's all it is, but it comes together and you're like, oh my gosh, it looks so real. And, and like as a young artist, I didn't understand that. And I just tried to paint everything as super tight and photorealistic as possible. And I would just waste hours on details that I could have just went bloop, bloop, bloop. And, it's, and it would have worked <laughs> if I got the right color, the right brush strokes. Um, and so that's kind of um, the, the, another thing about this cover that it makes it kind of cool in that sense is that it's sort of not only is it historical for the obvious reasons, but for me personally, it's a landmark. You know, like, I feel like I'm, I'm continuing to grow and develop as an artist and this, I'm just honored that this painting turned out the way it did and in, in this technique and cause it's, it's, you never know, you know, I mean, I, I was always confident I was going to do a good painting for them. That's not the issue, but the process of what I just explained of how I did this painting, I've never done this process before, not this way. So it was kind of exciting, you know, <laughs> because you, I don't know. I don't know if, I don't know if it's going to work out the way I'm seeing it in my head, you know. <laughs> were, were there any parts of the painting or the process that, that you fumbled on or had to go back and rework or was this just no. a start to finish home run? Yeah, no, it, it was, no, it was, I mean, I, at this point I, I have painted so many portraits that I don't feel I, I kind of, you know, I kind of feel like there's, I have, I have, I sort of have a philosophy with, cause I, cause I do caricature illustration and I do realistic portrait type um, illustration. And I kind of came up, came up with this years ago for myself. Like I, if I get to do caricature, what I think is really cool about caricature is to be able to exaggerate as much as they'll let me get away with, which doesn't always work. Sometimes they make you pull back and pull back and pull back. But if, if I can get away with as much as I can and, and really have fun and create something um, interesting with the caricature, but then I want to render it very realistic. I want, I want a very realistic type um, lighting and rendering. And, 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 and that kind of is a really cool thing because I've, dist I've distorted and exaggerated and pushed things, but then it's got this realistic element that's just like, what's going on here? And I love that. But when it comes to port portrait work, Portraits are, it's a matter of, of measurement. Um, it, it's getting the proportions just right, understanding the anatomy, really focusing on the, the little subtle details that make that person's face unique. But it's, it's a lot of just measuring and, and um, you know, noticing like a little curve in someone's mouth or the lip or different things. And I do tend to like, even if you look at Kamala's mouth, the little way her lips are, I do kind of exaggerate slight slight things because it's kind of pushing the character a little bit but what makes it different 
between the, the character and the, the portrait is a portrait is all about getting the proportions just right and then the features and everything. But then many portrait artists can do that. What makes it different, what can separate it, um, I think is that's where the aesthetics come in. That's where, you know, that's where I, I kind of feel like if what I want to do is I want to try to do beautiful brushwork. I want to try to push things with my color palette. And there's a lot of awesome artists out there that, that really excel at that. Um, otherwise it's just going to look like every other photo or, you know, so. I think your taste as, as a person, as someone who is a lover of the arts, um, someone who understands the, the history of illustration, the history of fine art, you have a very developed taste that allows you to make these decisions that are in the end successful for the particular team. I hope so. <laughs> I try. <laughs> I, I am always, I feel like I'm always learning. You know what I mean? I'll, like I, I always feel like there's more to learn. Um, and there's always a challenge. There's always struggles, you know, with every painting. Um, but I think that is important, you know, struggle is important. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, but that's, that's, um, that's pretty much the process of it. Um, and it was, it was fun to work on, you know, and it, it's really kind of a cool thing because I don't normally save my steps like this very often, but they asked me to save some steps and it was really cool when I was done to go back and look at them, you know, like, mm -hmm. cause it's, it's, for me, it's weird. It's, it's like when to look at that one image and to see, you know, I'm glad to save the steps because now I'm like, Oh yeah, that's how I did that. Cause like while I was working on it, I wasn't thinking about it really about. Yeah. It's almost the type of alchemy. Like, like you have the, the tools, the process, the steps. Um, but when you're done, it's just something completely different. You know, yeah. it's more than the, the sum of its parts. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, you are still pretty young in your career. You have been illustrating, um, working for a long time, but you've got decades more to produce work. Um, where does this particular piece fit into you or rank in terms of your overall career so far? Oh man, I think, you know, when I did the pulp cover, that that was the biggest thing I, I think I'd ever done. Um, it, just just in terms of the the kind of exposure, um, it was just it was intense. Like I I didn't I I I, I was caught off guard by like mm -hmm. how how much that the painting was around and everything. It was a really cool experience. And so for years, I've kind of been living under the shadow of my own painting, of never being able to surpass that painting. Because I've always been known as Jason Siler, the guy that painted the Pope, person of the year. Um, I did, you know, one of my favorite things that I got to do uh, in the last few years is I got to paint six stamps for the, for the post office. And that was always a dream of mine. And, um, and uh but people kind of forget about that it's like the pope it's the pope you know mm -hmm. and, and and there's nothing wrong with that i really am proud of the pope painting and everything and it was a great experience um but i think this painting kind of like now i think i've kind of i think I'm, it'll be like the biden harris cover you know that's the one i think maybe for me it feels like the biggest thing just because you know i gotta say like this this whole you know, <laughs> this whole like last like eight, nine, 10 months has been insane for everybody. Um, totally. In so many ways, um, personally, professionally, um, politically, it's just been a hard time for everybody. And so a, a part of me is like, I'm, I'm so proud that I did this that, and that it turned out the way it did and that, um, it was chosen for the person of the year. I mean, it's just, it, again, it just blows my mind. Um, and it's just, it's so, it's such a cool, I mean, I can't tell you how much it means to me. People have been so nice. I've gotten a lot of nice messages. Um, um, I told you I got one from Kevin Nealon and I'll, I'll share that in a little bit just cause it was so cool. But people that have like writ, written me and it's just so encouraging. Like it, it, that combined with the fact that, this is such a historical moment. Like I've got four daughters 
And the fact that, that we have a first vice president that's, that's a woman and a woman of color, I think is just, it's obviously it's monumental, but the fact that I feel like I got to play a small part in capturing that moment in history on the cover of time, it's just, I can't tell you how much it means to me. Um, <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I know that I have a particular reaction to this because I know you, I, I followed your work, consider you a friend, but there was a certain joy that like, came from seeing this image. Like it, it's a very powerful image. Um, there's like some sense of just happiness or joy or like pride in seeing this be this huge image that's seen all over the world and in such a, you know, change for America after, like you said, how terrible the last few months have been, um, the political insanity of the last four years, uh, this just seems yeah. like there's something like joyful about this image. Yeah. And you know what? I, I got to say, like, it's, it's been a weird experience because um, I, you know, we live in a, in a society right now where everyone's got access to I mean, I mean, I, I'm in my my apartment and I'm doing a podcast. Like anybody, like anybody can say anything and anybody can tweet anything and anybody. So, but that doesn't mean everybody should, mm-hmm. you know. And everyone thinks they 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 have a voice that should be heard and and maybe in a way everyone should. But there is also that comes along with that a lot of negativity, a lot of, you know, and and I'm always I'm kind of used to that now because it's it's no matter what I paint now. Um, I'll be happy and proud of a job I did and I want to share it. And for the most part, I get like really good comments that are encouraging and nice. And, and sometimes people don't think that like it affects you. I mean, when someone says something, it affects you. Like, yeah. (laughs) And And like like, (laughs) 1% of the people out there uh, have something negative to say about a piece of your art. 1% of all the people that see this is like hundreds of thousands of people. That's a lot of negative comments that, you might see or have to go through yeah. and it is a controversial image too i mean the person of the year is always a little bit controversial but this I one mean, especially i think at the time yeah i mean and with this one i i was expecting you know definitely expecting because there's such a political divide and everything and but um i i got way more positive um you know messages and and, and things um but i there's it's those negative ones that you're just like, ouch, you know? And, um, I mean, I got, I got one just yesterday that basically said I was, uh, I'm a, a a fucking piece of shit. Um, I hope that this destroys your career and, and, and like stuff like that. And you're like, why would you say that to somebody? (laughs) Yeah. I think one thing that I don't take it seriously. I'm just like, Jeez, man, like that's insane. That's so mean. Also, we talked about how (laughs) you're painting. This isn't, doesn't, you're not especially endorsing someone. You didn't choose who you were painting. Yeah. And Time Magazine also picks the most historic person. Like you mentioned, yeah. they picked Hitler one year. Like they're not saying Hitler's, Hitler's great. We're going to celebrate Hitler. Yeah. Um, obviously, I'm not comparing Biden to Hitler. But just the idea that Time Magazine is completely in charge of this decision. But people are going to throw yeah. hatred at you because of the way I got a, I got a lot of... Uh, you know, I got a lot of people that are right wing who wrote me and they said, and they left messages saying, Hey, I, I disagree with the choice, but damn, nice painting. Congratulations. This is, you know, so I've got like, like people like that, that are really cool, really nice. And then I've gotten people that are like, you know, F you, it, it should be the health workers. And how dare you endorse something like this? It, you know, when these people are heroes and, and I have to write them like, Hey, listen, I also support health workers and I would have been honored to have painted them as well. It's it, but it's not my choice, <laughs> and like, <laughs> you have nothing to do with that. Yeah, and like, it's just weird to you know. So there's gonna be those things, but like I said, man, the overall experience of this it is overwhelming, and like I said, um, I'm I'm a proud father of four daughters, so the fact that um, you know, like I might not even agree with everything that Kamala agrees with, you know, it doesn't, but it doesn't, it's the point that it's historical, and that our country is at this point of growth and change. And that means something and it's important and it's beautiful. And I feel honored that I got to be a part of that, you know? And, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm honored. Like my, I know my daughters are proud, you know, well, the two older ones, the babies, they don't know. 
know yet. But one day they will know that their dad yeah. beat it. So I, I, I really feel good about that. Um, and like I said, like, just it's, it's a cool thing and it's a thrill as an artist. Like, it's always really cool when, um, you know, you meet um, people that you look up to and admire and that, you know, um, that, that share your work. And, and as, and as a, uh, someone who's trying to do comedy as well, throughout the last couple of years, I've gotten to meet a lot of awesome comics and um, that I look up to and I've seen them share the work and it just, that means so much to me. Like they have no idea. It's just like that. Can you give people um, a little bit of an idea of, um, so the day that Biden accepted the uh, presidential election, um, he gave a speech, uh, it was aired, but I think you told me that that morning you had painted, uh, a pic, you had posted a painting that you did of Trump, uh, carrying oh, yeah, his yeah, bags. Yeah. <laughs> and like you said, you know, there wasn't um, any caption or information to go yeah. along with it. It was just you sharing a piece of your artwork. But can you tell us, tell us some of the people that kind of shared that? Well, that, that was really cool because it was so random. I didn't know Biden was officially elected yet. Um, but I was just tired of seeing Trump, like, just saying all the things like, like I won everybody. Okay. And, you know, he like, he, he just, it was like, it, it's like, it was, it's just so weird. And I was just like, I'm so tired of this guy. I, I, I want him to pack his bags and just go, you know? But then I re remembered I had this painting I did um, of Trump where he's holding his suitcases. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to post that. Just cause that you don't even need to say anything. I just posted it. I didn't put any caption, nothing. And I got a ton of people just, you know, they, it kind of went viral for a little bit just on my own and then and throughout the last couple of years i've become friends with kevin nealon uh, which has been awesome because he's such a cool guy and of course i love him for his comedy and he's also a, a, a good artist and so him and i have been uh you know spent a lot of time chatting and talking about art and comedy and stuff and uh he wrote me he's like hey buddy do you care if i share this and i was like of course man and that was cool because kevin's got a little bit more of a platform than i do <laughs> and so <laughs> so yeah, so he shared my painting, and it's always nice when people share your painting and give you credit because that's happened to me a lot where I don't get credit. Mm -hmm. um, but he shared it, and it got so many views so fast, and all of a sudden, um, um, I'm blanking on his name, um, Michael uh, Rappaport, uh, he, I, I, someone told me, oh, dude, he's like sharing it on Twitter and on Instagram, and I looked, I'm like, oh, my gosh, and then I looked, and he wrote me. And he was like, uh, cool. yeah, and he was like, amazing work, a, man. Yeah. He's such a fun follow, especially at the, the end of the election cycle. He Dude, was just oh, yeah. fire. <laughs> just like yelling all the time. It's pretty <laughs> funny. But like he, he basically shared it. And, it, and I, I just was so touched. I know that sounds cheesy, but the fact that he thought enough to write me and ask me or say, hey, nice work. And, and I was just like, wow that was just so cool. And then, um, uh, Brad Garrett, uh, who's a, a comedian and an actor that everyone knows from everyone loves Raymond and tons of movies. And, um, I just, he's, I was actually just watching him in a great, um, uh, series called, um, I'm dying up here. It's a, it's a really great series. Oh yeah. I saw that. Um, and he, he, I was just watching the second season and he's on it and I'm like, Oh my gosh, Brad Garrett wrote me. And, and I'm like, this is so cool. And then, so he, him and I were talking and I'm like, this is crazy. And, and all just because, you know, Kevin, like, you know, liked my work enough and wanted to share it. And, and all of a sudden, like, it was just, it was really crazy too, because like my Instagram was blowing up. I think I got like 3000 extra followers in like two days or something. Um, and again, for me, the reason that kind of thing matters for me is that's more opportunities for me to get more work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cause that's really what it's all about. Cause um, I don't have any job security. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I work from one job to the next. So, um, so that kind of thing is really cool, you know, and for me as an artist, um, I have been ripped off a lot. People have used my work and not given me credit and stuff. So it, it's been so cool that there's people that I look up to, um, mostly the, the comedians just because I just, I really, you know, like Steve Byrne, um, who I've, um, done some work with recently and did his movie poster. He, he just shared my, this is kind of funny, actually. He, it actually moved me that he was, that he shared a post on Instagram with my time cover and the poster I just finished for his movie. And he put them side by side and he did a thing like, Oh, this is so cool. You know, 
my buddy Jason, who did my poster, just painted this, and I was like, oh man, like that actually like kind of touches me a little bit. I'm like, oh, it's sweet. And then I and I go to look at the comments, and the first comment is by Jimmy O Yang, and I'm like, and he's like, that's awesome, Jason. This is amazing. And I'm like, dude, that's so cool, Jimmy O Yang. And I go, let's see what other comments. And the rest of the comments are all like you're a piece of shit. <laughs> they're all, they're all like, like I, I went from like feeling like super like, wow, to, Oh geez. Like, so yeah, that's the you one. You notice the too. people who are successful in what they're doing, man, I don't think I've ever, not that I can recall. I don't think I've ever like posted a mean tweet or like commented something hateful on someone's artwork or something that, cause if you're doing your own thing and you're even moderately, able to do what you want to do you don't look down at other you don't have hateful things to say to other people yeah it's just i just think it's weird man <laughs> it is really weird like i i i don't know i mean hey i'm known for like like getting into debates when i shouldn't like, like I, I try not to do that as much anymore but i mean i can understand being heated and passionate about something but, well, to, just go opinion, out of, but, but to go out of nowhere and like just you know like crap so, on someone for <laughs> for like something that you have nothing to do one with. of one of my favorite instagram comments on and here's the thing i look at all the comments and i respond to all my comments um if i don't write something i'll put a heart or something i feel it's important i always i never want to lose a connection with fans and people that support and respect my work i feel that's really important and i never want to lose that because um they took the time to write something and to like something that means a lot um, but one of my favorite comments underneath my cover, when I shared my cover, and if you look on Instagram, you'll see it. If you go through it, I didn't delete it. I deleted some that were really negative because I was just like, that's just not cool, man. We don't, you don't need to call me a pedophile. <laughs> I don't know why yeah. you would say that. <laughs> it's uh, absurd. Like people, like crazy people that have wrote some crazy things because I painted these people, they, they want to hate me. So whatever. But one of the people just put a bunch of poop emojis. <laughs> That's all it was. was just, just poop, 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 poop. And I just, I started laughing. I was just like, that is hilarious. So they obviously don't like my cover or the people, or whatever. It's fine. It's fine. But uh, I do want to share this just because I talked to Kevin. I asked Kevin if I could share this because, um, you know, it, I, I was told three hours before they announced uh, the cover that I was, uh, that I, I got it and I couldn't believe it. And I, I wanted, I, but I, I you know, I can't really share it, um, uh, with anybody. Um, like I didn't want to, I didn't want to share the art or anything that I don't, you know, but I did share the news with people that I'm closer to, like, you're going to want to watch at nine o'clock. Yeah. You know? And like, I told my parents, you, you know, got to watch NBC at nine o'clock. And I told, you know, I told Kevin, you got to watch at nine o'clock, you know, so that's a pretty good clue <laughs> of, mm -hmm. you know, but, um, but Kevin, I was, it was funny. I missed his call. Um, him and his wife, I think are in Nashville right now. I missed his call. Um, and, uh, I was holding my, my, uh, six month old baby and, um, and I remember my phone actually vibrated and fell off the couch and landed on the floor. And I, it's too hard to bend over and pick it up when you're holding a baby. And finally, my other kid, here's your phone, dad. And I was like, oh, Kevin called. And it was the coolest thing because it just, it kind of made my night. It was just before they announced um, the whole thing. So, Jason, it's Kevin. And Susan. We're so excited for you, man. Congratulations. Congratulations. Oh, my God. This is so exciting. We're so happy for you. I'm not telling anybody, not even my wife. No, he's not. We're not telling anybody. We're locking our lips and we're not going to Snapchat it or Facebook it or anything. But wave we it or anything. Are gonna, we're so excited and I'm going to try and watch it. Is it on CNN tonight or what's Woo! it going to be on? We're going to watch it at uh, 9 o'clock national time. That is so, oh man. If, if there wasn't COVID, man, you would be out celebrating right now. That's huge. How many have you done? How many have you done for Time Magazine? Now, if you get the cover of Reader's Digest, then you'd be really popping. All right, man. We're happy for you. Congratulations. This is the best news uh, of the year, I think. Yeah. That and my show are uh, getting sold. All right. Talk to you soon. We're going to get that. I'm going to get that issue. I'm going to have you sign it. Okay. <laughs> Dude, I love how supportive and genuine and authentic and just like heartfelt that was. Yeah, man. It was, it was pretty cool. It was pretty awesome, man.
Um, yeah, and, it, and it's it's funny, like those those little things do matter. You know, it's like it's 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 hilarious. Um, I think you can take a whole bunch of poop emojis if you get some <laughs> praise yeah. from Kevin Nealon on your phone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 cool, and it's just it's you know we as artists and you understand this like any time you know you know your work gets recognized it means something and it's not like and i don't even mean in a oh i did this i'm super cool you know you should like me my work no it's this is how we make a living this mm-hmm. is this is it's our passion it's our joy it's it you know but it's also what helps me put food on my table and feed my kids and and keep the lights on and and so when you get that kind of recognition it 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 does mean something <laughs> you know because I've, I've had people be like you know you know get, be weird to me about like you know you're so why are you sharing this and why are you sharing like like almost like in a way where they think i'm uh like i don't know like you know you know that like you feel like you're bragging or something and it's just like this uncomfortableness it's like no i just mm-hmm. I'm, it, 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 can I be your, like proud of my work? You know, like, yeah. <laughs> right. I just want to share. Yeah. Is it so, okay if I try to do this again sometime? Bills yeah. are due next month. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I I can understand. I can understand like uh, uh, you know why people are sometimes like that. But but overall, this has been an amazing experience. Um, and it really do, I don't really. I mean, it just happened a few days ago. So, I mean, I don't really know how to, in a way, separate it. Like, it's very funny to see people have been making memes of the cover already. Um, Jimmy Kimmel did one with Donald Trump's head popping up, like, like um, you know, next to their faces. And I've seen a few other uh, interesting things. And so it's it's kind of interesting because it, in a way, it almost is like like an uh, like a like a what would you say like a pop um culture type thing now like it's totally it, like it's it's it is like i said before it's not really my baby anymore it's like people are doing weird things with it i saw a cartoonist did a, a funny cartoon about it and tagged me um and uh it's just it's 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 in, it's a weird thing it's it's hard to explain um I'm just grateful. I really am that grateful to be a part of it. And um, yeah, I, and again, just waiting for that next job. <laughs> so like, that's what I, and, and you know, and it's really cool, you know, because um, the, the art director did write me and told me how happy the editors were and uh, especially the main editor. Um, and that's huge, you know, that, cause to me, I'm like, that's great. Cause that means maybe I'll get some more work you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I'm not ready to retire. Let's put, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, this digital image was released about three days ago. Um, I checked it last night. I'm just trying to figure out a way to see how many times something had been shared online. I don't know if there's any way to do that. Maybe some tech genius out there that can, could help us out if they hear this, but just looking at something as simple as the, the time tweet, um, since I looked at it this morning, it's gotten thousands more likes, um, shares. Like this is really a viral image and could end up being one of the most seen images of the year. Um, oh, and crazy. it's really crazy. And I think that it's like heartwarming for me to see that this is not about COVID. It's not about Trump. It's not about everything that we've been living with the past year, but it's very much yeah. of this year, you know, this just happened and it kind of sets the tone for the hopefulness for 2021. And yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just so happy for you, man. I think it's incredible that you did this and that it's as successful as it is already. It hasn't even come out on the stands yet, which it should next week. And I'm curious to see where it goes from there, you know? Yeah. Thanks, man. And thanks again for, for suggesting to do this. I hope people enjoy this um uh seeing the steps and hearing a little bit about the process and everything um and uh and thank you for you know taking the time to talk about it and um you know i i I appreciate you know it's part of the reason why i do the podcast is um i enjoy talking with artists because 
excuse me, I think, you know, we have, we're like-minded in a lot of ways about, you know, it, it, it's it's just not even just about the art, but being that that's a f- kind of like a foundation that we have, um, we can relate on that. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. it's almost like, like even when I, I just started doing comedy and doing stand up stuff and just before the COVID thing, I was going out a, a couple nights a week and I started making friends with comics and, and like, even though we had just met, like I started hanging out with different comics. Like I'm, I'm still talking with them like a lot now even though we haven't seen each other since last March when everything stopped mm-hmm. but right away, there's like this, you just connect right away because you, there's something that, you know, is so relatable between, you know, and that's, that's the thing I feel like with all artists, like there's like this connection and, and I think, you know, having someone like you being able to talk to me about this kind of stuff makes more sense than, um, you know, in a way where it's it's like I, I know I'm gonna get an honest reaction or feedback or questions from someone like you, <laughs> and it's strange for me um, on my own podcast to have the roles reversed a little bit. You know, it's kind of a, a weird feeling. But I, yeah, is this uh, the first time you've been interviewed on your podcast? Yeah, <laughs> That's, I, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm honestly honored. Yeah, when I <laughs> saw how quickly the image was getting shared, I just thought people would really enjoy getting to hear exactly what you've given them today. The process, kind of behind the scenes, how you felt about it. Um, I think that's gonna be super interesting to a lot of people and I'm really honored that you asked me to be a part of it. I never would have guessed when I sent you that message at first. (laughs) But yeah, I've enjoyed this conversation very much. Uh, Enjoyed our chat and and hearing about it. Thanks, man. And yeah, I mean, I appreciate that you were willing to do it and and jump on it as quick as you did. And um, so thank you so much for that. And, uh, and everybody else that's uh, watching this or listening to this, thank you so much for your support. And whoever sent the poopy emoji, thank you for that. <laughs> that made me laugh really hard. Um, and uh, everybody also make sure you check out John Casey's um, work and his Instagram. What, what's your Instagram, by the way? Uh, it's John underscore Casey. And um, my website is uh, cartoon.guru. It's the word cartoon.guru. Cool. So everybody check that out um and thank you again so much everyone be safe and we'll talk to you all soon thanks again jason you want answers